I'm Maria V. Snyder, and I'm an author. I've been an author for the last um, 10, 15 years. Uh, published my first book in 2005, was Poison Study. And so now I have a, a series of books, the study books, and we have a, the next series is the glass books, which is storm glass, sea glass, and spy glass, which is what we're talking about today. And I have a new YAT novel out also, so it's really exciting. Well, in this world, which is pre-industrial, um, they have swords and horses because I like swords and horses, and I think guns are cheating. And um, her magic is glass magic. She in, she traps her glass, her magic, in glass, and then people can use this magic. It becomes like batteries. So, with a world without electricity, we now have magic that is portable, and it also acts like a cell phone. If you're a magician who can communicate telepathically, you can use one of her glass animals, and I was calling them messengers, and you can communicate to somebody who's, you know, miles away and let them know what you're doing. So basically I invented for the world like cell phones and batteries. So it really has a big impact on the world because it's, it's a powerful, you know, the powerful technology. It's powerful magic. When I wrote Poison Study, in my mind, it was a one and done book. You know, she was a food taster for the commander and she was stuck there and her basic, you know, goal was to be free. And I thought that would be the end of it. And I wrote the book and when I got to the end, I thought to myself, well, I could possibly do a second book, but you know, I hadn't sold Poison Study, so I wasn't going to write a second book. And then when Harlequin called me, I remember it was Helen French from the UK office and she was so excited about the book. And she's like, yes, and we want that in the next book. You have another book, right? And it was like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can. When do you need it? Bye. <laughs> and good thing it was like another 18 months to write it. So then I wrote Magic Study. And at the end of Magic Study, I was like, oh yeah, I can do a third book, Fire Study, easily. Well, with the Opal series, her family is a big part of her life. With Yelena in the study stories, she was an orphan. And so her family was not part of it. But in, with Opal, she has like a pretty big family. She has an older sister and a younger brother, and actually two older sisters and a mother and father, and she's connected to them, but she wanted to like break from them, I think, when she did her adventures, and she didn't want to worry her mother as much. In Spyglass, her mother really comes out. She's a really fun character, and she's really good at ladling on the guilt. She's like an old Italian grandmother, <laughs> giving Opal a hard time, especially with the whole wedding preparations, which I had a lot of fun with. Well, Opal's generally a nice person. She doesn't like to uh, deceive people, but she really needs to. She needs to get a little tough, and she needs to disguise herself in order to get the information that she needs. And also, she's been burned by people before in Stormglass. You know, who she thought was one person actually turned out to be a completely different person. So trust is hard for her. And trusting the right people has always been something she's bad at. Well, with Opal's story, I'm, I'm stopping for now. Be three, usually I get to three books and I'm, I'm done. Like as far as the characters and where I take them, I usually get them to a place where I'm happy with, and I need a break. I'm writing another fantasy novel in a set in a whole new world, and this world's sort of like a, also like a dystopian fantasy world where there had been a plague, and the plague had killed a bunch of people, but the survivors, there's some survivors, and they're not, they're all fighting for dominance, and the healers in that world have been, they've been told, or everybody thinks, that they are responsible for the plague. But they're not really responsible for the plague. But the main character is a healer, and she's on the run because everybody thinks she's responsible for causing the plague. And sure enough, you know, somebody's looking for her to help help do something good, and she doesn't know what to think. You know, she's trying to keep low. But so that's that's going to be the next fantasy novel that I write. I always pick strong characters, and I'm always been very independent and very um, not afraid to do things. I mean, I travel all over the place by myself, and some women think that's just, like, amazing. Like, I have friends that won't drive to the next city at night, and, I'm, you know, and I'll fly off to L.A. and arrive, you know, 8 p.m. and just get in a car and go to the hotel without thinking about it. So I, I've always been pretty independent, so I think that probably reflects. And I've taken karate. And I have a brown belt in Ishinru karate, so the karate goes mostly in most of my characters learn how to fight and defend themselves, because I think it's important. And my readers, some of them are very inspired by the, my characters. And it's so nice when I get an email saying they've signed up for karate or they've, 
they're taking a kickboxing class. And that's just, that's just wonderful to hear. Favorite email from a reader was a girl, 16 year old girl from Texas. And she was, her English class was doing a Tuesdays with Maury where, project where they had to talk to a mentor or somebody they looked up to every week. And then at the end of like three months, they had to write a um, report about it. And she emailed me because she had read Poison Study and Yelena inspired her so much she had been depressed and was considering suicide. And by reading how Yelena managed to go from death row to a, to a more um, stronger position, it inspired her to keep going. So I was like, wow, really blown out of the water by that. And we emailed each other for like weeks and I'm still emailing her. She's in college now. And I have a picture, and actually in my Harlequin frame I got from one of the parties, I have a picture of her from graduation and she has books spread out in front of her and the one she's holding is Poison Study. And that just, you know, that was better than any award I won. Being on the New York Times, nothing compares to, to knowing her. And I got to meet her in Dallas when RWA was down in Dallas and we spent the day together and it was just the most wonderful thing.